watching ABC4 News at 10. Long wind causes trouble throughout the state, including school closures for tomorrow. We have live team coverage of this severe weather threat coming up. First the high winds that were hurricane force, then the rain. Soon it will be snow and it could be lake effect snow. I'll have your complete future forecast coming up in weather. American soldiers visit a Utah classroom. We'll tell you about the special mission. ABC4's nonstop news starts right now. Good evening, everyone. An army of utility workers is braving the elements tonight, trying to restore electricity to thousands of Utah families. This after a ferocious windstorm pummels the state. Right. In some places, the wind was measured at 70 miles an hour, enough to turn over trucks, rip power lines right out of the ground, and force flight cancellations. ABC 4's Chris Jones joins us now live from Salt Lake International with the latest. Chris, at the storm's very worst, nearly 30 flights were diverted or called off. Yeah, that certainly is true, Ruth. Earlier today, this arrivals and departure board was basically peppered with little red signs like this that said that airplanes had been canceled. After a while, everything kind of returned to normal, but that windstorm earlier today definitely did more than just ground airplanes. It shook us. It's really crazy out there. Pelted us. It's like a giant sand blaster. Turned the sky to mud. Just hit me, the sand's getting all in your eyes. And in some cases, flat knocked us over. Went, went ahead and finished the job and pushed him the rest of the way over. This ice hauling truck was upended. Boy, the mountain gets rough when the weather changes. But the wind chain clamped down on all of us today. Dirt's blowing everywhere, we're, tre we're losing trees. The Cooley brothers just planted these trees. I think they're all going to die. The flight got delayed because of the wind. They couldn't land. At Salt Lake International, two dozen flights diverted. He called and said that the pilot said no planes were landing. Or cancer. These missionaries will have to wait another day to go to Chile. We're going back to the MPC, and we're going to try again tomorrow. But those that did fly. Oh my goodness, you know, and, and I kept my eyes closed and I was kind of white knuckled. Today the wind marches in, reminding spring who's boss and blowing some planes for the rest of us. So try again tomorrow? Yes, exactly the same time. Okay, guys, I stepped outside the airport right now. That wind mainly gone, but check it out, replaced by rain. And if you take a look at this, the weather dropped, the uh, temperature dropped by like 40 degrees today. Back to you. Big changes, Chris Jones. Thank you. That's right. Well, utility crews do have their work cut out for them tonight. 78,000 customers are without electricity. 15,000 of those are in Draper. A giant burst of wind just after 2 o'clock this afternoon sent 17 power lines crashing down in Draper. ABC's, ABC4's Heidi Hatch reports now from the neighborhood hit hardest. crews are doing all they can to get the evacuated families back home tonight. But before that can happen, several giant poles have to be removed from rooftops. That process in and of itself uh, could require, uh, of course, some dangerous work. Uh, if something were to happen while they're trying to remove a pole, for say, and something slipped and fell back onto a complex. No one was hurt as the poles originally came crashing down. Now their job is to make sure it doesn't happen a second time. Okay, got it. Bye. The Red Cross is providing dinner and a warm place to stay tonight. They're also trying to make sure everyone is accounted for. It was kind of scary. Elwood Fatzinger lives in the Heritage Apartments with his brother. They were at home listening to the howling wind when the lines came down. Complete strangers and banged on our door said, better get out there. The brothers say this was the first pole to topple. After that, they say it was just like dominoes. The next 17, one right after the other. It's nice to be able to come back home again. Elwood, his brother, and the rest of the families were allowed back in once the wires were grounded. But they were only given a few minutes to gather what they needed for the night. They quickly grabbed their medications, a change of clothes, and had a minute left to put their shoes on. ABC 4's Heidi Hatch reporting from Draper. Now, families from the complex she was showing us are staying with family or friends tonight. Others, like Elwood and his brother, are in the care of the Red Cross. Work will continue throughout the night, rain or not out there. Their goal is to have power restored in 14 hours, but they're saying more realistically it might be by tomorrow night. Now, if you do see a down power line, obviously don't touch it or try to move it yourself. Call 1-888-221-7070.
And would you believe snow and more rain is on the way? Dan Pope joins us from the ABC Forecast Center to explain tonight's advisories, watches, and warnings. What a day, Dan. Yeah, it's been a busy day today, Randall. And a lot of folks ask us, what's the difference between a warning and an advisory or a watch? Well, a warning means high wind, snow, severe thunderstorms, or tornadoes are occurring or are imminent. Now, a watch just means that the same things are possible. Not happening, but possible in the next 12 to 24 hours. An advisory is not as severe as a warning, but signals to the public that a significant weather event is about ready to take place. Well, we've had watches, we've had warnings, and we have advisories in effect. I'll have all those details in seven minutes, so stay tuned for a complete future forecast. All right, we'll look forward to that. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. And parents, you'll need to know this. There are some schools in Draper that will be closed tomorrow because of tonight's windstorm. Juan Diego High School, St. John the Baptist Middle and Elementary Schools, and the Guardian Angel Daycare are all closed due to wind damage. A wildfire fueled by the high winds in Iron County is now under control thanks to the quick work of some local firefighters. It started between Parowan and Bryan Head. People living in nearby homes were on standby to evacuate. Luckily, crews did get the fire contained. The blaze also caused a power outage and the closure of Highway 143 for a few hours. The FBI is asking for help catching a bank robber. They're calling the Sugar House Bandit. The suspect, seen here wearing a black T-shirt and baseball hat, walked into the Wells Fargo Bank at 235 South 13th East and demanded money with a note that said he had a gun. He's described as a white male, early 20s, 5'11", with stocky build and brown hair. Now, that description matches other robberies recently in the same area. The FBI says the man should be considered armed and dangerous. A Colorado man with Utah ties was one of those soldiers killed today in Afghanistan. The man's name has not been released, but we do know he was with the National Guard's 19th Special Forces, headquartered in Draper. The four Americans died when a weapon accidentally exploded. Ten soldiers were carrying Soviet-era missiles left behind by al-Qaeda fighters to a secure area to be detonated. Well, the Pentagon tonight is analyzing another videotape showing Osama bin Laden that was broadcast on a Mideastern television network. The tape shows one of the September 11th hijackers boasting he was going to kill Americans in the U.S. and abroad. In another segment of the videotape, bin Laden is seen but doesn't speak. U.S. officials believe that portion may actually have been made last summer since he looks quite a bit better than he looked last time he was seen on videotape. A show of force of sorts today at Lehigh's Eagle Crest Elementary, but not to worry, these guys are on our side. Utah National Guard troops just back from a tour overseas dropped by Mrs. Evans' third grade class to say thanks. Now these students wrote letters of encouragement that expressed their patriotism and their concern for our service men and women overseas. You are so brave to go and fight in the war. I would never be brave enough to fight in the war. I hope you are safe and no one is hurt and thanks for keeping us all free. It's a real morale booster. It gives you something to look forward to. <clears throat> Plaques of appreciation, flags and dog tags were given to the class after a stiff salute. With wild weather all around the state, green thumbs are advising all you gardeners to give your flower beds a little extra protection. Mary Lee Reese says if you've already planted annuals and your tomatoes, they do need some shelter from the frost and snow. Reese recommends covering them up with a frost cloth or bed sheet and make sure you batten down the corners. One good tip is to water well. The water actually absorbs the heat during the day and then releases the heat during the night. And while most annuals need frost protection until after Mother's Day, Reese says if you want to get your hands dirty, now's a great time to get out and plant tree, shrubs and trees. Did you work on your garden this weekend? A little bit. A little bit? <laughs> I didn't plant any tomatoes. I was smart enough not to do that. We it's didn't pick up sticks, you know. We're just getting <laughs> right. things ready. Right. Had he planted his tomatoes, they'd be up in Tremont. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I've been blown away. <laughs> hey, we've got, we've got some uh, snow falling in the bench areas, and we will have a little snow on the valley floor. I'm concerned about lake effect tonight. First of all, let me tell you why it was so windy. We had the lowest barometric pressure in the history of Salt Lake City and the state of Utah. We have never had a barometer this low, and when that happens, the winds blow. And a high wind warning remains in effect for Sam Pete and the severe valleys for southern Utah. For west central Utah, the central, southwest, and Henry Mountains for some strong possibly severe wind gusts, wind advisories for the western Uinta Basin, the Wasatch Plateau, and the Book Cliffs, 
And also, we have a heavy snow warning for the Wasatch Mountains, the Book Cliffs, the Western Uinta Mountains, the Wasatch Plateau. 7 to 14 inches will fall above 7,500 feet. And locally, 12 to 24 inches will fall in the Cottonwoods from this storm. And a lot of the snow that falls in the Cottonwoods and the mountains in Davis and Salt Lake counties will be a little bit of lake effect added into the whole mix. Now, 1 to 3 inches of very wet snow could fall in northern Wasatch, central Wasatch front locations, and in the Tooele Valley. But the area of greatest concern is Salt Lake and Davis County bench areas where up to six inches could fall, and it's already snowing there. And, uh, the reason is lake effect. And the angle of the wind coming across the lake, the cold air and the warm waters of the lake, from Farmington to Bountiful, the avenues, and up towards the Olympus Cove, that'll be the zone where we could see those lake effect snow squalls between midnight and about 10 a.m. in the morning. Here's Doppler radar. First of all, lightning tracker showing some storms over eastern Utah in between Moab and Ridgefield. Tonight, though, the heaviest precipitation has moved out of St. George, now moving eastward, and you can see the rain snow line now very close to Salt Lake City. It has been snowing in Ogden. It has been snowing in Logan. It has been snowing even in Wendover, and the east is still pretty warm. But right now, we're getting heavy precipitation, and boy, this is good news. We're in a drought, and this heavy precipitation obviously is an inconvenience, and the wind is a real problem, but the rain, the showers, good news. It is cold out there, 33 degrees. Where's the front? Look at this delineation right there. It is still 66 in Moab. 33 in Salt Lake City as the air from the cold Pacific Northwest moves in. And here's the storm and the scenario sets up for the weather tracker showing you that the upper level low is sitting right over the top of us. This will move eastward and with the exception of lake effect snow in the morning we should see improving weather tomorrow but the next storm system it zips into the Pacific Northwest and will be on top of us as we head into your Wednesday and this will bring additional showers in fact most of the week Wednesday Thursday Friday this low pressure will hang around keeping us wet and this wet scenario is perfect for uh, this drought situation. So the snow tonight, and very, very cold, along with breezy conditions. You'll see temperatures tomorrow barely warming into the 40s, 50s, 60s, though still some 70s in southern Utah. Bottom line along the Wasatch Front, a few showers around Provo, but the lake effect will be the main problem until 10 a.m. in the morning for Davis and Salt Lake counties, and definitely cold even in the afternoon. Now, the pollen count has been a problem in the extreme category to high category for these individual pollens. They're going to be a problem. But tomorrow, the good news is they will drop because of the rain and the snow falling. That'll help levels. Now, the UV index was 6.2 today, and tomorrow's forecast after the morning snow up to 7. All right, the day planner. Morning snow, afternoon partial clearing. You can see some improvement. But there's that wet scenario. Off again, on again showers. Good news for a drought. Good news, there's no more high winds coming in, although it is definitely chilly. Windy in the south, 70s and 60s for highs. That's weather. A lot of weather. Good Tons for the drought. Weather. Not great for the tulips, but good for the drought. <laughs> Your tulips are going to be squashed. <laughs> I want to take just a quick second to uh, officially welcome Ruth Todd aboard uh, and tell you we are so excited to have you and so happy to have you as part of our team. We've known each other for 20 well, years I know or we so, have. but well, we get to work together you know, and now. I have to say to Dan, to, you, to everybody at Channel 4, thank you for the warmest welcome. I feel like family right off the bat. You guys have been great. Open arms. Appreciate it so much. We're going to be a good team together. Thanks. It'll be fun. Well, an alert about reverse telemarketing tonight. We'll tell you what you need to be watching out for coming up. Then a local company is giving back to the people of Utah. From women's shelters to animal shelters, we'll show you what they're donating. It was a surprise. It was a pleasant surprise. Plus, it's the busiest night of the year at 24 Utah post offices. A look at what procrastinators are facing tonight still ahead. And Secretary of State Colin Powell working hard for peace tonight. Our World Brief is up next. So, have a nice day. You're watching ABC4 News. Welcome back. Secretary of State Colin Powell remains very hard at work in the Middle East tonight. His peace efforts top our world brief. Powell spent the day trying to end Syrian-backed Hezbollah attacks along Israel's border with Lebanon. Members of his staff are working to create compromises with Palestinian officials for a possible ceasefire. There is a very real danger of the situation along the border widening the conflict throughout the region. And a man who topped Israel's most wanted list for months is now in custody. Marwan Barghouti is a self-described Palestinian freedom fighter and one of Arafat's top lieutenants. 47 people are recovering in South Korea after surviving a plane crash. 
The Chinese passenger airplane was carrying 166 people. Authorities say the Air China 767 crashed because of dense fog and rain as it was trying to land at a nearby airport. The survivors, all Korean, were taken to the hospital. All other flights to and from the Busan airport were canceled because of the bad weather. Top International Brief, banks throughout the nation's capital closed their doors today after police received a phone call threatening to blow up a bank in that city at noon. Although banks were not instructed to close, many did on their own. The FBI says because there was no way to check the credibility of the threat, it forwarded it to the banking industry just as a precaution. Environmental crews in Michigan are struggling to clean up a big mess. More than 10,000 gallons of oil on the Rouge River. Cleanup crews say the spill is the largest one on the Great Lakes in a decade. Investigators haven't yet found the cause, but birds, fish, and other animals are already feeling the effects. Several birds have been found dead. Those responsible will have to pay fines, plus the cost to clean up the spill, which could reach nearly $30,000 a day. An alert for you tonight. The next time you contact a business you've seen advertised in the classifieds or on the Internet, be careful. That's the word from the Federal Trade Commission. They are warning against a new scam known as inbound telemarketing fraud. That is when you contact a business that you have seen advertised somewhere. This is a particularly insidious white-collar crime that robs victims of their money and of their dreams. The FTC says most of these businesses are run by con artists who use the power of persuasion to make money. Residents of Las Vegas are dealing with the very same kind of weather we are tonight. High winds clocked at more than 70 miles an hour knocked down power lines, trees, and small buildings today. The winds knocked down this large tree at an apartment complex. People with respiratory problems are being advised to stay indoors. And zero visibility along Highway 93 caused a 15-car pileup today. Well, you have less than two hours to get your 2001 taxes in the mail. 24 Utah post offices will stay open until midnight for last-minute filing. If you're in a crunch, here are a few things to keep in mind. Inspectors say people often choose the simplest forms to save time, but then avoid itemizing. Things most often missed are mortgage interest, charitable donations, and medical expenses. Now, if you're not going to make the midnight deadline, pick up Form 4868 and call 1-888-796-1074 for an extension. Then you will have until August 15th to file, but you still have to pay what you owe today. I didn't see you in the line there. No, you? got it done already. All right, well, that's good. <laughs> You know, superstars and national ch super stores and national chains are popping up everywhere these days. Now, these corporate giants not only add a few tax, uh, new newfound tax base to our communities. Right. They also strengthen neighborhoods. As ABC 4's Heidi Hatch tells us, one store that's opening is opening a lot more than just doors for business. It's opening arms to families in need. They cut, rip, and rush to keep the shelf stocked. But in the hustle and bustle of everyday business, some bags get ripped. At a store like this, merchandise is always getting damaged, like these diapers that have been torn open. Damaged or not, here at Walmart, they know someone can use them. Their job is finding those people. We can't sell them, so, and they're still good, so we donate them. West Jordan Super Walmart has only been open for two months. But they've already donated $35,000 to the city they're now a part of. It's just Walmart's way of saying thank you. You know, just a little bit of giving back to the community for what the community gives to us. Local nonprofit organizations are also saying thank you. Dogs at the Murray Animal Shelter are dining on Walmart's dollar. Here's the last load of damaged doggy treats they received. Back in West Jordan, Cindy Christensen runs the South Valley Sanctuary for families escaping abuse. She's already received several shipments of damaged goods. It was a surprise. It was a pleasant surprise. Money is hard to come by at the shelter, so each item is a help. And usually I have a little bit of everything, you know, toys, diapers, soap, toilet paper. Uh, these are diaper wipes. You know, most parents know what diapers cost, and um, you multiply that by you know, 10, 15, 20 kids at a time, at any given time, and, and those diapers alone are a huge expense. The necessities are appreciated, but it's the not-so-essential items like this cotton candy machine that make the sanctuary feel more like home. It was kind of something that we wouldn't normally go buy, obviously, 
it was something that was kind of fun. Heidi Hatch, ABC4 News. Walmart stores nationwide hire employees specifically for community service. But they're not the only ones giving back to our community. Linens and Things is another business that sends clearance items and open packages to nonprofit groups. Way to go, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, Dan will be back with the recreation forecast coming up. Also coming up on ABC4, find out what binge drinking may have to do with a person's sense of smell. Mm -hmm. And the FDA gives its stamp of approval for a product that gets rid of wrinkles at 1024. Good evening, everyone. Here's a look at what's coming up tomorrow on Good Morning Utah. Have the best lawn on the block. We have some tips for lawn problems. Plus, if you've been thinking about adopting an animal, we might have one for you. Join us tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. for Good Morning Utah. Well, as you can see, we're getting the rain and now snow in the valley, but you're probably thinking, what about the weekend? Dan, I want some nice weather for the weekend. Well, Saturday we'll have some showers, 30s in the morning and 54 in the afternoon, 58 on Sunday. Now our recreation forecast takes us to Park City. The Kimball Art Center reopening will happen this weekend. 638 Park Avenue in Park City, chance for showers Saturday, partly cloudy Sunday, 45 to 50 for your temperatures. And if you want more information, www.kimball-art.org. And there's your recreation outlook and a look at the weekend. Gosh, I'm glad I haven't gotten around to putting all the jackets away. It's been on my list. <laughs> haven't know. done it yet. And, and don't thanks. do it yet. Right, thanks. You're welcome. Well, here's something that might make you really smile. The FDA says okay to a popular treatment for frown lines. Botox is actually a purified strain of the toxin that causes botulism. Injected in small doses, it can weaken or temporarily paralyze your muscles, reducing the appearance of wrinkles. Botox has been approved for treating squinty eyes or eye and brow wrinkles for years. Today's government ruling means the company behind Botox can now market its product. Well, there is more startling evidence tonight about the damage binge drinking causes. Study of rodents confirms that brain damage can occur during binge drinking. It was previously believed that damage is caused during withdrawal. University of North Carolina researchers say damage to the part of the brain responsible for smell occurred after only two days of binge drinking, damage to other brain regions after only four. It's that time of year again, yes. the Red Rocks. Gymnastics looking for the first title since 1995. So it's been a while. It's been that long? It's been a long time. Oh. Coming up, the University of Utah gymnastics team getting ready for a shot at another national title. And the Jazz are keeping a close eye on what the Sonics are doing in Los Angeles. We'll show you as well. Sports is up next. One more time. Hertz Car Sales keeps the spring fever going. Only two games left in the NBA regular season, and the Utah Jazz still don't know when, where, or who they'll play in the NBA playoffs coming up this weekend. They do know it will be either Sacramento, San Antonio, or Dallas. But Seattle might have something to say about Utah's plans, and tonight the Sonics playing the Lakers in Los Angeles. The Sonics get it going early. Vin Baker on the inside with a little jump hook. He scores. Seattle leading after the first quarter, but the Lakers would retaliate. Samaki Walker had a big first half, couple of dunks. And the Lakers are rolling right now. Shaquille O'Neal gets in on the action. Little crossover step on the baseline. Shaq throws it down, and right now the Lakers leading 93-75. If the Sonics lose, the Jazz are in seventh place in the Western Conference. Life in the Big Easy has been anything but easy for the Salt Lake Stingers. The Stingers lost all four games in New Orleans, and they lost tonight by a score of 6-3 in the Majors. St. Louis at the defending world champion Diamondbacks. Mark Grace with the deep fly ball. Jim Edmonds, known for his glove, has it, and then drops it. That's not good. Grace strolls into second. It was that kind of day for St. Louis. Later, the ground ball, and the Redbirds are just a day late and a dollar short all the way around on this one. Safe at first, safe at home. Arizona goes on to win big, 14-5. And the NCAA Gymnastics Championships will take place this weekend in Alabama. And the University of Utah will be there vying for another national title. The Utes are coming off their two best meets of the year, which gives them confidence to go for their first championship since 1995. All of us have just kind of realized that we need to relax. When we go into meets and we're expecting to hit everything and we're just, I don't know, tense and have these expectations, then usually we don't do as well as if we just go in and let ourselves do what we know how to do. It's obviously tougher than it used to be. There's a lot more competition and, and uh, you know, but and we've come close a couple times, but uh, yeah, of course, we'd like to get over the hump and win number 11, but, but uh, you just have to take it as it comes. And finally, in the deja vu all over again department, 
Check out this video. This is from 20 years ago when a young Ruth Todd and a much younger but still very suave sportscaster worked together for the very first time on TV. This is circa 1982, and who knew, Ruth, that 20 years later, you and I would be working again sans the cheesy mustache. Oh, and sans the fairer hair. Hello. Let's talk yeah, enough about you. Let's talk about me. I look, I look hot there. We had a good time back in the college days. I, I, I still recognize both of you. Guys. And welcome to ABC4. Thanks. I owe you one. Big. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Wesley. We'll be right back. Sport brought to you by Lee. All right, one last look at tomorrow's weather. Can't be as bad as it was today. <laughs> Not as windy, but it's turning over to snow right now. We're getting some snow in the valley. It has been snowing on the benches. You're going to wake up to some slush, 33 degrees, and then by midday, the snow will be over, at least in the Davis Salt Lake County bench areas. And uh, going home, 47 and partly sunny. That 47 is 31 degrees colder than it was today. Back in the 40s. <laughs> yeah. There we go. What's on the sports docket? Well, the Jazz have two games left in the regular season. They will play the second to the last game tomorrow night in Dallas with the Sonics losing tonight in L.A. Good news for the Jazz. They move up to the seventh spot. Hopefully they can hold on to that. I'm to start this weekend. I'm going to find one of my old tapes. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> That'll be fun. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for joining us and our new team. We're happy to have Ruth here. Don't go away. Nightline is up next. And thank you for letting our new family join yours tonight. Join Reed and Reagan for the very latest news on Good Morning Utah. That's tomorrow beginning at 530. Bye.